Good morning. I want to welcome everyone to our service here at Morris Hall Christian Church. Whether you're here in person or you're here on live stream, it's wonderful to have you here this morning. We do have a few announcements, and I will make those announcements. First up, I wanted to be sure and remind anyone, if they want to get in touch with Phil, that all his contact information is on our Facebook page. And also, we're kind of limited on announcements, but I do have one announcement. On Wednesday, the Seekers will meet. They will meet downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. Our meeting starts at 6 o'clock. And this week, we will focus, we will be watching a program. It's going to get us ready for the new book that we will be studying. It's called Mere Christianity by C.H. Lewis. And everyone is invited to attend the program, or the the program itself begins at 6 o'clock, but we have a snack supper from 5.30 to 6. So, if anyone would like to come, you're invited. Would you please stand and we'll have our invocation. Dear God, as we gather together this morning, we thank you for the many blessings you bestow upon us. This has been a long, busy week for many, and our journey is made bright because we are leaning on your everlasting arms. We need your gentle touch or nudge as we stop and rest along life's pathway. May we be aware of the changes in nature as summer winds down and autumn makes its appearance. For with these changes come wonder and awareness of the beauty of the earth. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer we pray in unison each week. Its words are very powerful. Let them guide us and provide us strength and comfort through thick and thin. At this time, may we focus on the meaning of the Lord's Prayer, and let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. time we'll have our hymn of praise which is number Shirley what number is that we'll sing number 550 there's within my heart a melody we'll sing verses 1 and 4 children's moments 
with Shirley. Shirley will have our children's moments this morning. Hello to all the kitties out there. I have a question for you. Who is your favorite superhero? Do you have a favorite? I don't. Actually, the only thing that I can even think of that comes close to a superhero for me, when I was a kid, I liked the little mouse, now Mighty Mouse. Anybody remember Mighty Mouse? Mighty Mouse to save the day. He was my only superhero. But I started looking up superheroes, and I found out who the three most popular superheroes are. And Mr. Wright, sitting here in the, in the church today, he has a mask on with Batman. And I thought that was pretty cool. If you turn around to the camera, she can see your Batman mask. But we're going to talk about superheroes for a minute. The first one, did you know, I'm getting ahead of myself, superheroes have two names. Did you ever think about that? So this one, you know, is Batman, but he has a real name, Bruce Wayne. Superheroes have two names. This guy, you all know, is Spider-Man, but his real name is Peter Parker. And of course, this one we all know, Superman, and he is Clark Kent. He was the only one that I really knew his real name. So superheroes are people who we look up to as for fun, someone that we might think can do all things, but they're really, they're a person with a real name. You know, a lot of us have two names. If I would say to you, who is the minister of Warsaw Christian Church, you immediately would call out a name, Philip Case. Or if I would say, who is the guidance counselor, if I said the guidance counselor at Gallatin Lower Elementary School, you know it's Angela Bledsoe. Or you also might know her as mom. So people have more than one name. Now we're going to switch gears a second. I know that a lot of you kids that are watching, you have sleepovers. And you invite some of your best friends to come over and you hang out and you spend the night and you probably don't go to sleep till really, really late. But while you're doing that with your good friends, you talk about all kinds of things. One of the things you might talk about is, well, what did he say about me? Or what does, he, what does she think of me? And you talk about things like that with your best friends. And that leads into the scripture that Phil's going to use today. Jesus was with his best friends, his disciples. And Jesus asked them, who do people say that I am? I mean, he asked that. That's the kind of things we do when we're with our best friends. And the friends said, well, some say that you're John the Baptist. He wasn't John the Baptist. That was the man before him, his cousin. Some say that you're Elijah. And some say that you're Jeremiah. These people were from the Old Testament times. They, that's not who Jesus was. And then Jesus asked a really important question. And he said, well, who do you say that I am? Have you ever just said to one of your friends, what, what do you think about me? And he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And that's what Phil's going to be talking about today. So how did Peter know who Jesus was? Because he was a very good friend of his. We know our friends. They followed Jesus. They talked with him. They watched him. They saw how Jesus lived. And so they knew who he was. Did you know that we can know Jesus like that? If we follow him, if we read about him, if we pray to him and we try to live close to Jesus, then we know who he is and we can have that same kind of relationship with him. So let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you that we can learn from you through the stories of you in the Bible. We know that they help us to learn about you, know who you really are, and that we can learn about you and then we can help others learn as well. Just help us every day that we can learn more and more about you and try to be more like you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. I have several names on the prayer list this week. Um, first up, is Kyle and Jason Smith. Kyle Smith has been, he had an accident this week. Kyle fell out of a tree. He was in the hospital a couple days, and I believe he got to come home on Wednesday. He did break a couple, he broke three bones in his back. 
and um, he's going to have to wear a brace for about three weeks. But other than that, he has, I believe, um, things. I think things are going to be okay. But um, and Tanya also reported that Jason had a real good doctor's appointment this week, which is good. It's positive. He, um, they changed, switched out some of his medications, and hopefully he's going to be able to do this procedure that he's had scheduled within a couple weeks or so. And also we have um, Terry Smith, Jason's mother. Terry is on the prayer list. She's having some health problems, and Penny Moore, and the Smith family. And I believe we have let Skip here today. How you doing today, Skip? I'm here. Good. It's good to see you. And um, we we also have extended list that will be Phil will send that out at the beginning of the week the extended names we have several people on the extended list also and also Skip wanted me to remember to put the family of remind me again Skip Howard Ray, Howard Ray on the on the prayer list the family of Howard Ray okay and also I have a couple of praise reports which are all, always good to have um, I have a praise report from Spike and family. Spike took Maggie, his daughter, took, they took her to college on, they, she went to Transylvania on Wednesday. And they tested her and she tested positive for COVID. So they were all going to have to quarantine. But they had, Spike and Barbie and the whole family had a test on Friday. And um, don't know how that came out yet. But Maggie's test was false. It was, it was a false positive report so that is good that's a praise report many blessings and also i have another praise report i want to thank or the praise report is for my brother he's not out of the woods yet he's got a long journey ahead of him but he's he he's kind of up right now he's doing good from all his transfusions and everything so if we will pause for a moment of quiet meditation As we come to you this morning, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to gather here in your house. May we never take this privilege for granted. May we always seize the opportunity that we can. We are blessed in so many ways. We are blessed too, O oh God, during these times of quarantine and times of stay at home and social distancing and everything with the coronavirus that we have the technology to take our worship service our worship of you into the homes of members and friends here and around the country we pray that we may expand this oh god because everyone can't come to church at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. We want to be able to offer church whenever folks can come to the, their computer, their tablet, their cell phone, and visit our services of worship there. We praise you and thank you for the technology and the people who have provided that technology to enable your word to get out, not just at these walls, but beyond these walls. We gather here today on this beautiful, beautiful last Sunday of August. For the moment at least, the heat is broken, the rain has stopped. All of these things have come to bless us and we are here to enjoy this day with beautiful blue sky and cooler temperatures. We know that the seasons are changing Days are getting shorter, the sun goes down, 
sooner comes up later, we can feel a little chill in the air. But we know that this is a part of the circular journey of life that we experience each and every year. We embrace it, we move with it, and we know that you are a part of it. We gather here today and we ask you to look upon us and those names that have been added and on the prayer list. Our ongoing challenges with our members who have so many health concerns, we would pray that you could help them to be stronger and better and their healers. We pray that you would be with the family of Skip's friend in a very trying time. Also, oh God, that you would be with those who need to be perhaps on a prayer list somewhere but don't want to say their name or speak about what their problem is. We thank you for being there for them, for being there for each of us in times of challenge when we can feel your presence. We gather here at this place. We remember all that has gone before, all the trials across our long and storied history, the wars, the pestilence, the disagreements, the splits, the reunitings, the day-to-day -day things, too, that make a church what it is, the weddings, the funerals, the baptisms, the countless worship services, the fellowship dinners, the Sunday school classes, Bible studies, on and on and on how this church has touched the lives of people across two centuries. We pray that we may continue to enhance and strengthen that legacy, not only for those yet to come, but for us too. For we need to feel that strength. We need to know that you have been, that we have been here and in your presence. We ask you now to bless us as we worship Bless us as we go our way, before we go as we share in the Lord's Supper, here and as we watch at home. And we thank you for that privilege. May we never take either for granted. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask it. Amen. Our soloist this morning, the indefatigable Laura Hanson. I just want to say thanks to Shirley. She picked out this beautiful song today. I had nothing to do with it. It goes along with Phil's message about who Christ is. The busy streets and sidewalks, they suddenly grew still as a man came through the entrance of the city. Jesus, he's everything to me. Yeah. 
we get into the sermon, I want to mention that our college student, Kennedy Bledsoe, is here with us today. Kennedy, we're glad to have you. I hope you're having a good time in Georgetown. As I've told you, my cousins all went there. And they all had a good time and got a good education, too. Glad, to, glad that you're here with us this morning. I, and I, I want to, I need to mention every week, but I don't. Senator Kirky and, and the, the sound audio-visual program that she has taken on is her own. If she could turn around the camera to herself and smile, Janie's back there with her, and I don't know where Don is today, but that's all right. He can have the day off. But thank you for your dedication to learning the operation. My brother is a wonderful person, and he has done so much to put this all together, but he's not the easiest person to work with sometime. David, you know that I love you. He's very demanding, very expecting, and reminds us of everything that we need to do to make it just perfect, and that's what we want because we want to share the Word of God as best we can without glitches, without hiccups, as far as we can to spread this good Word. And we thank all of those people. I, I don't know how we would have done it, how we could continue to do it without them. If any of you are learning how to do this, would like to, I'm sure Simidor will be glad to teach you. Just those things. Each time I pass back and forth from Frankfurt to Warsaw, and I do that usually at least twice a week, sometimes more. So that's twice on the same, that I passed the same road in the same places, same, the same landmarks. Those of you who have traveled to Frankfurt will know the spot I'm talking about. It's almost to the, out of Owen County to the Franklin County line. A little Baptist church called the Old Cedar Baptist Church. Very famous sign on, on the side of the church that was there for many years on a, an old barn that was beside the church. A neon sign beside a Baptist church in the middle of the country. Now, if that isn't something worthy of a special on television, I don't know what is. But the letters are about all this tall. You can see them easily from the road. And when it was on the board, it said, Christ is the answer. Something happened to the barn. It was a ramshackle barn in the first place. I guess they had to tear it down. But they saved the sign and built a nice sign, I don't know what to call it, but a sign board that fits perfectly. The sign fits perfectly across that, that you can see it easily, day or night, from the road. The difference is now, now whether by design more likely by accident, because we all know how neon signs are. When you go by the, a grocery store or a business and there's only half of it on. When it says Super America and it just says soup or it says save a lot and it just says lot, the lights went out. On this sign, the, the, the words now are simply Christ is. And you can see the answer there, but it's not lit up. The answer's not lit up. And I pass that and pass it and pass it. Finally, last Sunday, I thought, you know, there's a real message in that, and I don't know if they're going to fix it or they're not planning to fix it because it allows us to think. Christ is what? What is Christ to you? What is Christ to me? We can be allowed there to fill in any words or word we want to. Christ is enough. Christ is the answer was what was there. Christ is the Savior. Christ is the inspiration. Christ is the God. Fill in the words yourself. What is Christ to you and it makes this it makes this sign really deliver a very personal message. Shirley pointed out in the children's sermon this morning 
scripture that I want to share because Jesus himself asked that question of his disciples. Who do men and women and boys and girls, who do they say that I am? In other words, who are you, Christ? Who are you, Jesus? Who is this guy that walks around and, and has people following him and they want to touch his garment and they want him to say a word to them or they want him to touch them? People just follow him. They follow him. Who are you? Who are you? So he asked his disciples that question. 16th chapter. This is the basis of what we have come to call the Good Confession. 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew 13th through the 17th verses. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Well, that was fine. That was the first part of the question. Who do, who do other people say? Somebody asks you a question like that. Who, who do you, Shirley was talking about two names. Who do you say that Joe Wright is? Well, he's a retired principal of the Lower Elementary School. How do we peg people? We say, do you know so and so? Who are they? Well, we start out by saying he or she lives over there, or they work here, or their parents, their family, their roots run like with Skip's family 5,000 generations deep into Gallatin County soil, which is wonderful to say that you can say that this is where Laura, that, that you attach to this, to this area. And then people say, oh yes, I know him or her. I know that person. I knew his father. I knew her father. I knew them. That's how we know who people are. So Jesus is saying, okay, who do people say, I can't do that. <laughs> Seminor says, no, can't put the Bible over the microphone. Nobody can hear you. <laughs> who do people say that I am? Well, so. Some say, here's the second part of that. Charlie shared that with you too. Some say, let me find what it is. Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Well, people talk, you know, they say, okay. Oh, it's John the Baptist come back. He's the prophet Elijah, come back. He's the prophet Jeremiah, return. That's who he is. That's who he is, because they wanted this is something special. Once had someone tell me that, that they knew that Jesus was a Baptist because he was baptized by John the Baptist. And now, you don't find, <laughs> I find that kind of funny. <laughs> That's what the joke was, that he was baptized by John the Baptist, so that made him a Baptist. Could be true, I don't know. Everyone wants to say, everyone wants to claim Jesus claiming he's mine, he's ours. Well, he's everyone's. These people are possibilities for that. Okay, then Jesus gets to the next verse, verse 17, or verse 16 first. And he says to them, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And there's the question that comes down to each and every one of you. There's the question that comes down to answering the sign, Christ is. Who is Christ? Christ is. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter. We could talk a lot about Peter. We won't talk too much. Very impetuous person. Always the one that stepped forward first. The one that jumped off the boat when he saw Jesus on the beach and tried to walk on the water, sunk like a rock to try to get to him. The one who, when all of the turmoil was going on with his crucifixion prior to that, Peter says, I'll never deny you. Never. The other disciples just kind of said, 
I'll just kind of slide back into the crowd. Peter says, not me. Peter makes this, this statement, though. Then he gets called out on it. We all know before the rooster crows in the morning three times. He did exactly what he said he wouldn't do. But his heart was in the right place. He was impetuous. That means he just reacted quickly. We all do that. Some of us worse than others. You answer something too quickly. You respond to something and you say, I wish I'd have thought that over before I said that. You know, that was inappropriate. But Peter's the first one who steps up and he says to Jesus, let me read you what the scriptures say that he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus, that, that's the answer that Jesus wanted to hear. And Jesus says, answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Went on to say that he would make Peter the leader of the church and that Peter would be the one that people would look to as the foundation. Who do you say that I am? That's the question now that takes us back to the sign. Who do you say that Christ is? Study of the word Christ, I looked this up. I never took Greek. I took Hebrew for a week, but the professor said, you're not too good at this, and if you're not gonna be a PhD in Hebrew or an Old Testament, then you don't have to take Hebrew. I said, bless you. Susan and I took off the weekend, went to Gatlinburg to celebrate. And but I got, I got out of taking Hebrew. I still have the book. If anyone, if anyone wants to, that'd be a good Wednesday night study, wouldn't it? Take up studying Hebrew on Wednesday night. Probably be me and the blackboard. That'd be, probably be all that was there. But in Greek, Christ means, Christus means, that's what it means, Jesus. This is who Christ, the Christ is, the, the, the word came from the Greek word Christus. Take it back one more step to study said came from the Hebrew and the word was, had the meaning of Messiah. We heard this all the time, the Messiah, the great Christmas pageant, the great Christmas program piece, the Messiah. That's what Jesus was, Messiah. He was the Christ, the Savior, the gateway to God. He was the one. Finally, finally, we come to this as the good confession. Who do you say that Jesus is? I have asked so many people, young people, adults, all people of all ages, stand down here in front of the church and ask them the question, do you believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? And do you accept him as your personal savior? This is where that came from. Jesus was asking his disciples, declare to me who I, who do you think that I am? Who do you say that I am? The good confession calls us and guides us to that point. If we don't, can't say anything else about who Christ is, we can make that confession and go from there. We can make that confession and make that a part of our lives. It's important for us today, I think, in each day to, to reaffirm our belief in Jesus and what he stood for. Now, those are two things, belief in and stood for. If we're going to say we believe him, then we need to look at what he stood for. What did he stand for? What did he care about? What was important to him? When you say that you're going to believe and agree with something, then you're going to believe and agree with the tenets of whatever that is. So it's important for us to look and see, well, what did Jesus stand for? What did he want, what did he want people to do? And I think, I've said it so many times, but I keep saying it. You come back to it again and again and again that Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbor like yourself. What did Jesus say? Who was he? 
The sign says, I'll probably drive by today going home and they will fix the they will fix the light bulbs. And the sign will actually say, Christ is the answer. I think I may stop and take a picture if it still says Christ is so that I can post it on our website. Give a little advertisement to the old Cedar Church. They have one of those big signs out front too. I like it. A lot of times it'll say, God is here. 11 o'clock Sunday morning. I love it. It's like down here to Dairy Queen, you know, when it says, Pumpkin Pie Blizzard is back. Praise the Lord. I don't know if we're saying praise the Lord because we're praising the Lord or we're praising the Lord because Pumpkin Pie Blizzard is back, which is the confusion. God is here. 11 o'clock Sunday morning. Wonderful. Christ is what? You just ponder it, think on it, when you're doing whatever you're doing. What is Christ? Who is Christ to you? We bow together in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this great confession. We thank you for the confession that Peter made that we are called to make. And as we are called to make it, that we affirm who and what it is, what it means, and what Jesus means to each of us. We ask it now. We ask all in his name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning is 348. Three, Y'all that are singing along at home, more about Jesus. How many verses? First and last, 348. Folks in here, you can stand. Folks at home, get comfortable. service of communion, service that we share with God what he has given to us. We bring our tithes and offerings during this challenging time. We place them in here in the collection plates. We invite you to share as you are able and can to help support the continuing ministries of the Warsaw Christian Church. More important, we invite you to this table. This table, which is the table of the Lord. Jesus died for each and every one of us. And the answer to the question, that's what he did. He died for each and every one of us. It's the, the symbols of the bread of his body, symbol of the wine of his blood, are given for each and every one of us. We partake as Jesus has given it to us. Let us prepare for the table with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to this part of our service where we remember your great sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Savior, that we might have eternal life. May these elements today 
remind us and help us understand with a deeper love and affection for you and Jesus. In his name, amen. On the night he was to be betrayed, Jesus gathered his disciples in the upper room. He took a loaf of bread. And after he blessed it, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us share the bread of life. And in like manner, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and it passed it among them saying, take drink, this is my body, which is poured out for you. Let us partake together the fruit of the vine. Let us pray. Dear God, as we go forth from this sanctuary this week, let us remember that Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is our Savior. He will be with us every day and help us along our pathway. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. benediction. May the Lord love you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. Go in peace, go in good health. In Jesus' name, amen.